Hi everyone. What we're going to be doing today is deriving a formula for Euler's totient function using the principle of inclusion-exclusion from combinatorics. So that's quite a mouthful and let's dive right into it. What we have is as the definition of the phi function is that for positive integers n, phi of n, that's Euler's totient function, is equal to the cardinality of the following set. All of the integers x that are less than or equal to n and their, their positive integers such that the GCD of n and x is equal to 1. So this is equal to the number of co-prime positive integers less than or equal to n and they're co-prime to n. And we want to count this very important function. So what we're going to do is that we're going to express phi of n in terms of the prime factorization of n. So let's say n is equal to p1 to the e1 times p2 to the e2 all the way through to pm em where p1, p2, all the way through pm are distinct primes and the e, ei's are the um, distinct or multiplicities of the distinct primes. And what we're going to do is use complementary counting. We'll use the principle of inclusion exclusion in a moment, but first we need complementary counting. So recall that phi of n is equal to the cardinality of the set of positive integers x less than or equal to n such that GCD of n and x is equal to 1. So since there are n numbers in the, the set of numbers positive integers from 1 to n, the total number is n in the universal set that we're working in and we subtract from it the cardinality of the set of x less than or equal to n such that the GCD of n and x is strictly greater than 1. So the critical observation now is that the only way this is true is if a prime factor of n divides x. That's the only way this is true and it's actually biconditional. So if a prime factor of n divides x then the GCD is greater than 1 and if the GCD is greater than 1 then a prime factor of n divides x. So it's biconditional and what that allows us to do is write that this is equal to n minus the cardinality of x less than or equal to n such that either p1 divides x or p2 divides x or all the way through to pm divides x. So just for convenience we're going to define a set now. We're going to say tk for k in between 1, 1 and m is equal to x in the positive integers such that x is less than or equal to n and pk divides x. So essentially t1 is a set of these, t2 is a set of these, all the way through to tm is a set of these. So this allows us to write, this, write, us, write the set as n minus the cardinality of the union of T1 union, T2 union, all the way through to Tm. And now you can see how we're going to be applying the principle of inclusion exclusion. This, according to the principle of inclusion exclusion, is equal to n minus the sum of k equals to 1 through m with alternating signs, starting with the power negative 1 to the power of k plus 1 and we have this 
complicated looking sum, but it should be familiar to you if you're familiar with the principle of inclusion exclusion. J has a cardinality K, and we take the intersection of all the little j's and big j. So tj, intersection of all the tj's. Now this might look complicated but it's going to turn out really nicely. These tj's they consist of all the primes with, in, with the correct indices that divide the number we're thinking of. So we have n minus the sum of k equals to 1 through m as before and we have the alternating signs as before as well. But now what the sum becomes, and it's more transparent now, is that it's, it's iterating over pi1 all the way through to pik in between indexed between 1 and actually the, the p, p shouldn't be there so let's say the indices are from i1 all the way through to i m or i k and what we have is this intersection here the cardinality of this intersection is p i1 times p i2 all the way through to p i k and that's because though that's the number of multiples of this denominator uh, less than or equal to n and if you factor this I'll leave this to you to figure out how um, this it's essentially the, the, the distributive law backwards it's equal to n times 1 minus 1 over p1 times 1 minus 1 over p2 all the way through to 1 minus 1 over pm. So that tells us that phi of n over n is equal to this product here. So that is what we call Euler's phi or totient function. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.